This is Mr. Poser, and in this video, I'm going to be showing how to do a little book binding. I love using this book, How to Teach Nature Journaling, with my sophomore biology class. And we go out in the field, we do some great entries that get kids doing actual biology. They're making observations, they're asking questions, they're conducting small experiments out in the field. And they're really cool projects when we're done. And one thing I really like is having the kids bind their own books. They take a lot of pride and ownership in the finished product then, and I think it contributes to them really valuing what they have entered inside the journal. So to begin our material list, uh, we start with some sheets of um, paper that's six by 18 inches. For this, I buy a big pad of Canson XL mixed media paper. It's a really good buy in terms of art paper, pretty affordable. And with this big pad that's 18 by 24, I can just cut every six inches and get four sheets from each page in the page in the book. It, it's nice to draw on and color in with colored pencils. Uh, art pens don't bleed through and it takes some watercolor, which is really nice in the journals. For the cover, I've been using some reptilian embossed paper from black ink uh, it makes a nice durable cover but it's kind of expensive this year i tried some lighter paper this was a banana paper also from black ink it was smoother and easier to glue but we'll see if it holds up in the long term the cover is made with some pieces of chipboard chipboards a, th a thick heavier cardboard looking paper um, just the back of the the mixed media pad, that's a piece of chipboard. Um, I ordered this separately when I order the paper for the rest of this. Um, then you'll need a ruler, some scissors, um, binder clips are nice, an owl, um, sewing needle with a big head and some um, like embroidery floss uh, to do the binding. If it's not waxed, you might need a piece of wax. Glue, PVA glue works well. I'm going to be using some Alina Sticky Tack and some special book binding paste called Yes. Um, this is really nice because it doesn't wrinkle. But just Elmer's glue and glue stick also work for this. So to begin, uh, we need nine sheets of this for the pages inside the book and then a tenth one extra um, that will cover our inside here. We fold these in half. that. This is called a bone folding tool or bone creasing tool. Um, it just helps get a nice sharp line there. Um, not needed, just handy. Get all the pages together and then I use a binder clip to hold them. I take some glue then and I'm just going to glue in the binding here. This just holds it temporarily uh, while we're assembling the book and then once it's sewn, uh, we don't need that support as much anymore. It does help hold the pages in. So I just push that in, a couple more binder clips, and I'll set that aside to dry. For the cover, I take uh, whatever decorative paper I'm using for the front and I'm going to lay these out starting on a corner. I want about an inch overhang and these papers I cut a little bit oversized so um, it's going to be a lot longer than I need this one. So I'm going to lay that first one there and this is important. We want about a half inch, one centimeter gap between these two pieces. Um, that gives us space for our book that will have a um, little gap there for the pages to fit into. I just take a pencil then and mark my corners. And if I want, I can go ahead and trim off the extra now. A little bit easier now than when there's glue on it. The other thing I can do is miter these corners. I just go to a corner and I cut off the excess at a 45. We're going to be wrapping these edges over and that will help keep the excess paper out of the way. Okay, get it back like that. Like I said, glue stick works here. I'm going to use this Yes Paste. 
Um, it's kind of a pain. Uh, it works best if you wet it down with some water and a paintbrush first. And it's really thick stuff. Um, but if you add too much water, then your paper warps. And I want to do a good job on the edges of this. I'm just go ahead and using the, the decorative paper behind this so any glue I get extra is going to be glued anyway. So not too worried about being messy here. I line that up with my corner marks and repeat on the other side. books turn out a lot nicer when you can keep these pages in line so if you grab a straight edge these these should line up flush now I'm gonna glue down the excess paper on the edge get some of my paste in there and I just press that down continue that all the way around banana leaf here stem not sure just gonna glue it down over the edge this is another sheet that is six by nine but I trimmed it just a quarter inch shorter so it's actually five and three quarters um, so when I lay it on here that gives me just a little bit of that decorative edge around the outside I'm going to go ahead and glue this whole edge I'm gonna be a bit careful on this one not getting on the table. I want to avoid globs with this yes glue, it'll show through. And once I get the edges all glued, I fill in the middle. this while that dries so it dries flat um, but I've got some movie magic here and I already have a finished look let's just clear the glue so the next step will be the sewing part binding the book here's our dried sheets and I can remove the binder clips from them and place it here in where that crease is. So if I did this right, pages should go in and my book folds together like that. Uh, sometimes these sheets of paper um, don't come out very even on this edge. If you want a nicer looking book, use a cutting mat and a sharp knife and then a metal straight edge and line it up with the edges so that it's square and then use the knife and trim the excess. That'll make a, a cleaner edge. Might not show on the video well, but that'll make a cleaner edge here versus this one that's off a little bit. Another thing you can do is take a little sandpaper and sand that edge and it makes it really nice. Um, in sewing this, I get a piece of, of rigid foam board and lay down. I get the booklet positioned inside the cover where it goes so that it folds around there nicely. 
and then I hold it in place um, with the binder clips on the sides. We're going to draw in a line to mark where that hole goes. I'm going to use a big thick sharpie here. Normally I just draw on it with a pencil, but I'm worried that won't show in the video. We're going to measure in a half inch from each side and then draw a line parallel to the spine of the book. And then I'm going to mark every one inch for the holes. I use my awl then. I'm careful here. It's a sharp tool. And I press with a little twist and go through all of the pages. And so that, that all should clear all the way through. And I do all five holes. So sometimes it's nice to go through the other side and enlarge those. It's easy to get the needle stuck in them. Be careful poking through that you don't press into your finger with the awl. The awl and the, the thread I bought in a book binding kit, um, but embroidery floss works for this too. Um, if you don't want to buy a kit of stuff, uh, the, the cord that I was given in the kit isn't waxed. Wax is nice on it because it helps it slide through the holes easier and helps your knots hold when you tie knots in it. So if it's not waxed, you just take a piece of beeswax here, hold it with my thumb. I pass through all the way across and then I switch and come from the other direction on the cord. Sewing is usually the challenging part of this, getting the needle threaded and then following the pattern and tying the knots. Take as much time as anything else on the project. So I get one end threaded there. I'm going to create a big knot on the end, other end that doesn't pull through. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot, but I'm going to repeat it. I come around a whole bunch of times. And that should make a sizable little knot on the end of my cord. Like that. I'm then going to take my book, open up part way through. So I'm going to come from the inside through the second hole in it. Here, so I'm calling this side my top. Here's my second hole. I come through there. And this puts the knot on the inside of the book where it doesn't show. Oop, and mine passed through. Try that again. I made nice large holes in this so the sewing was easy on the camera. I'll just pinch it there. Put my binder clips back in place to kind of hold it together. Now I'm going to do a running stitch down the spine. So I'm in hole two here. I'm going to pass through hole three going out the opposite side. And I have one stitch across there. I keep that snug and I come through this side where I have my marker drawn. My holes don't quite line up after I clipped it. Boom. So I pass through going out the other side. So I came one over, one over. I'm going to repeat that in the fifth hole here. None of these are going to line up now. Um, then I switch from a running stitch to a whip stitch. 
I'm going to wrap it around the end of the book and I'm going to come through that fifth hole um, passing through the same direction I did just on that last minute ago. Those binder clips really get tangled in the cord. There. So now I have a running stitch from four to five, then a whip stitch around the bottom, and now I'm going to go around the spine as well just to pass through that fifth hole a third time. I'm here on this side. It's hard to tell because I have Sharpie here, but there is no cord there. I'm going to do a running stitch up to four. I'm going to pass and do a whip stitch around the spine. I'm going to running stitch up to three. Whip stitch around a three. Now I'm going to running stitch up to two here. This is a good point to check that everything's kind of snug and tight. This, this was a beautiful journal that the student did, but the, the cord here was loose. It held together, but that binding didn't stay as nice as it could have. Passing through here, you kind of watch out for that knot that's there. Um, sometimes you get the needle stuck in that and it's hard to pull through. From here, I am going to um, whip around and then I'm going to do a running stitch up to one. And I kind of do the same thing that I did in hole five. I'm going to come around the top of the book, pass through there, take the binder clip off now, get the binder clips out of here, keep that snug, do a whip stitch again, third pass through. Now the only spot that I haven't stitched, and it's going to be hard to see on camera because of the sharpie, is this line here from one to two. And what I want to do is open up the book to where I had placed that knot. And I'm going to pass this needle part way through and tie off on that knot. did a good job hiding it. So we're just going to pass through here. This is just a page in. What I'm going to do is just get the needle. Maybe take the, the needle off and just use the end. This seems to be a little bit easier. And I'm going to pass under and then take the needle and just grab that piece out. Get it with my fingers, make that a knot, put the camera with the glasses so the whole thing shakes. Yeah. And then some sharp scissors, clean that off. And that is the finished book. And so then I have my students put their name and date inside the front cover, and we begin uh, by skipping a page, and we'll put our first entry right here. Thanks for watching.